This is going to change how we work with AI. Hello, my friends, and how are you doing? Today, I'm going to show you some pretty amazing AI news. The first one is about Patchwork, which is a new canvas created by Midjourney. Everybody who has a subscription should be able to use that on the blog post. They have a description here on how that works. And here you have the link to that patchwork.midjourney.com. Down here is also a video about 20 minutes long, but they also have here read through, which can help better. And then you can also ask in their Discord where they have a very helpful community. Shout out at this point to Gombasta who has helped me a lot. Now let's have a look at how Patchwork works. Now this is an early beta preview. So it is functional, but it is a little bit difficult to understand. On the left side, you have different buttons on what you want to do with it. And then on the right side or the rest of the image, you can have here your full canvas, which you can scroll in and out with your mouse wheel. And you can see you have these kind of buttons here. You have fields and then you also have images. So let me explain how that works. The first thing you do when you arrive is to create this kind of world description here. Actually, I didn't put anything in that because I was just experimenting. But here you can basically describe the world, name the world that you want to create. And with that, create it like consistent styles, consistent characters for building a story. So that is really useful. And I think what a lot of people wanted. So first of all, here we for example, have a place. And when we click on that and you click into the canvas, you get this green dot here with the description below that where you describe that. I have already done that. So I want to go over here to show you that. Here we have the London Alley. And then below that, we have a description of that. You can also, by the way, get better descriptions by clicking on here when you have already written the prompt and click here on that little light bulb for tell me more. And this will extend the scene, the prompt that you have written to give you a better description. And if you don't have any title up here yet, you can click here on this tell me more button to create a title for that. Now, as soon as you have created that, you can see that you have a pa palette icon here. When you click on this and then you drag out, you can create the area with the ratio and how you want to have that. Here you can see I have the same prompt from over there. And this will then create the scene or the image in this specific ratio. Again, I have already done that. So you'll click here on cancel and you can see that we here we have different scenes that have been created like that. Personally, I found that this one looks most like the style I want to have. So you can create a style reference from that. The way you do that is you click on the image. Again, up here you have different buttons. And one of these buttons is this little rainbow that says use a style reference. When you click on that, this is going to then create an image here that is basically the style reference that you can link to other parts that you want to create. Now let's look at the character, which basically works the same. You click here on character, you get the red dot, you get a description for the character. You can create an image from the character and a style from the character. Now here is the most important part you need to know. If you want to put the character into a scene, into an event, for example, down here, I have the character walk in a park up here. I have the character walking in that alley. What you want to do in this case, you can use event for that. I used prompt for that, which is this kind of blue button here. And with that, you do the same thing. You make a description of what you want to have. You click here on the palette and then you want to drag out in the ratio you want to create. Now, here's the most important part. When you zoom in, you have your add and you have infer character. Now, when I click on infer character and we have named the character John in here, this is going to pull our John Marley character into that scene. But what you can also do on top of that is that you can click on add and then click on the image that you have created. And this is also going to pull the image in here, as you can see. And now we click on paint. This should actually create that character walking in a park. And there, as you can see, we have different versions of our character 
walking in a park, kind of looking like the original. It's not a hundred percent the thing because Mid Journey doesn't really have that super consistent character recreation, but it is close enough that you can know that this is the same character. And also, if you do multiple tries, you will get something who looks pretty similar to your original character. Now, one more thing that is very powerful here is that you can create a portal. And with that portal, you can basically then create an additional world, basically a sub world or another world you want to link to that. So this can become a whole cosmos or universe of different of these canvases linked together for a really huge world creation. And that's really amazing. The second news I want to show you today is Pika 2.0, which is their newest model. It's extremely powerful and it has a really amazing ability. And that is that you can mix and match different images and build a scene from that. But I have here templates that you can use as an inspiration. So when you click on this template, for example, it is asking you to upload an image of a face. Now here, if you have either a face or a character or clothing, you want to have a lot of clarity in the image of that. So a sharp image of the person or the object or the clothing, but very little noise in the background. So ideally a neutral background, maybe a white wall or things like that. Not a super busy background, especially not with different characters in the background. Now, as you can see, you can also mix other things. For example, here we have this scene where we have a woman in a studio with this green coat. Now, when you click on use as a template, you can see that this is asking for multiple image inputs of that specific actress, the code, the studio. Of course, you can use different kinds of clothing. What you can also do, of course, is when you're down here without clicking on any of these templates, you can click on ingredients and just upload your own ingredients and create your own scene from that. I'm going to show you some examples of that that I have created. This one is absolutely amazing, could be a movie scene. Now, the only thing is the goo that stuck to my face for a moment. But other than that, it is pretty amazing. Here we have another scene that is funny by mistake, but I really love it. I actually wanted to have this guy walking in a clown outfit, but him smiling in the foreground and then actually the focus shifting to the background with the clown is really funny. In the next scene, I put myself into that green coat and walk in the studio and that pretty work pretty well, although I look pretty fat in that scene. So yeah, but what can you say? And then I have here a scene of myself cuddling with a lion cup and that also work pretty amazing. Also, here's a scene of me sitting with a blonde woman in a cinema eating some popcorn. This also turned out pretty well. However, I also want to tell you that the scenes are often hit and miss. So for me, it was around 20% that worked out well and 80% that had some kind of mistake in them where I couldn't really use that. So that wasn't ideal, but still it is a super powerful technique to be able to combine these elements together. Now, the biggest downside for all of this is the pricing because you have to basically at least have this $28 a month pack. However, if you go here on the information, it tells you if you want to use the ingredients, which are the images I just showed you, it is a hundred credits per video, which means that per month you get 20 videos from $28 or you get $76 where you get 6,000, which means 60 videos from that. Now here's the kicker. If you pay $28 per month, and that is by the way, on the yearly subscription, it still has watermarks in it. So mm, yeah, I'm not sure about that. But overall, the technology is amazingly powerful. The next thing I want to show you is called Meshtron by NVIDIA. And this can create absolutely amazing meshes, also from point clouds, but also text to 3D. And what they say is it is much more detailed. It has a very nice surface. It has a very nice symmetry in the objects that it is creating. You can see he has a lot of detail to that. And here you can see that we have an input from a point cloud, which for example, can be created by using your smartphone and then scanning objects, which doesn't have a lot of detail. But here, as you can see, 
this can be converted into highly detailed meshes and not only that the meshes also have a very nice and clean structure to it that is also very beautiful for that because a lot of the ai 3d generators online they create a pretty dirty mesh not very clean from the details of the object but here you can see that you have a lot of detail you can see here with the amount of faces that are used and how beautiful these meshes are as they form that 3d object very cool here again you can see text to 3d mesh and then the final result which is very beautiful next let's talk for a second about Gemini 2. they have released the new version however right now you only have access to the flash version which has a lot more power than the 1.5 version this astra project is the bigger version that is supposed to come out early next year as a developer or tester you can access that already and as you can see it has live input from video and voice it can interact with your surroundings in the world in the way that it understands your surroundings can look at objects and answer you to that it is multilingual so the idea here is basically to have something that can assist you in your everyday life and do pretty complex things basically and really help you out for here for example understanding what that gate is give you some explanations for that however they have also other models like project mariner here that actually are supposed to be an assistant for you where you can give not just an individual task to it but multiple tasks at the same time so here for example to find an artist find information about that artist also show you images from that artist so it goes through the task list for you here also finding colors that you can buy to paint like that artist so a whole process of things you want to go through and also has a reasoning in between these steps this one is pretty interesting also but it can help you basically with video games to figure out a strategy or understand something and i think like this might be interesting for a lot of people for example i don't really like to look through the different customization points that you can give to a character to get more power so if i have an ai explain to me what is best for my character i would really use here again this kind of like interaction with the physical world which i also find amazing in this case even robotics to look at that could help you with the code to control a robot that is massively impressive and i think we all have tasks in our everyday life where we need help and even now i use mostly ChatGPT and claude to get answers for technical questions i have if a software doesn't work and things like that let me know in the comments what you think about these new technologies which of them did you like most would you use them and if yes what would you use them for leave a like if you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching bye